Hi, my name is Martin. I'm the developer of RPG Tools, and today I will talk about the new Humble Bundle and how to use RPG Tools as a level editor. So this Humble Bundle was just released, and um, it contains RPG Tools, the content package, and tons of assets. And today we want to use it as a level editor, and for that we will use the graphics from Galefire RPG. So at first you need to download all of these. So that's what I already did here. So just search for Galefire, as you can see 17 entries and download everything. Um, I extracted them all to, to a Galefire folder and uh, instead of that there are all these subfolders. So I just extracted everything there. Once you did that, you're ready to go and you can start RPG Tools. When you launch it for the first time, um, it asks you if you want to create a new project or open a project. So in this case, we want to create a new project. Um, the template project, we use none in this case because we just want to use it as a level editor. If you want to use the RPG engine, then you should better use the template project if you don't want to do everything from scratch. Then you need to select the project folder. So by default, it selects the RPG tools folder in the documents folder, which is fine in our case. And we will create a new project. And that's it, then we press OK. And for this tutorial, we will just use the level editor, so you can jump to that. The level editor, this is the level screen where you can scroll through the level and here you can see the different layers and you can also add new layers or edit existing layers. Um, by default, the, the first layer is the tile layer, which is just a set of textures and you can configure the textures for every rectangle, so for every tile. You can resize the level or you can just create a new level with, uh, in this dialog you have a bit more options like the tile size, the tile width. But um, for this tutorial, we will only use object layers. The default level already contains three object layers, the background, object, and effect layers. So background is rendered first, then the object layer, and then the effects layer. But you can add new object layers here. So when you select an object layer, you see all the PNG files you have available. So currently there is only one existing PNG file because we didn't tell the tool yet which folder we want to add. So we click on File Edge Image Folder and browse for the path where all the assets are located. Gave folder. And here you can check the options which artists to support. In this case, we don't need um, specific functions to, to pass the files from this artist because they are just simple PNG files. And click on OK. That's saved as a project setting, so next time you don't have to do that again. And here you can see all the PNG files. There is a limit, a display limit of 200 by default. You can change that here. And you can search for things. Um, so for example, if you want to place a table, just enter table and you see all the table PNGs here. But at first we should add some background graphics. So, um, for that, we can filter the directories. So we can 
here all the directories inside the gale file folder and then we will just activate the isometric dungeon designers folder for now and we will also reduce the previous scale to have a better overview oh that negative should not be supported that's a bug fix that quickly let's say 0 0.4 yeah, that's a good size and now you can browse through everything and we will start to place it yeah, in this tutorial I, do, I won't create a very nice looking level i will just show you how it works and try to create something which looks okay <laughs> but yeah this should hopefully help you help you to get started so we are in the background layer, so this rendered first, and we can use this tile for example. And here in the options, you can activate. Uh, you can see the the size of the snapping coordinates. So um, by default, the, the grid size is 16 by 16, and you can activate snapping by holding Shift. So by default, snapping is not active, so you can freely place everything. And when I hold shift, it's snapped to 16 by 16 coordinates, which helps you to place them side by side so they fit together like that. 16 by 16 is, yeah, works for a lot of graphics like that. Place a few of these. Of course, it would be a bit boring to place everything every time the same one. Let's change that. Okay. Um, yeah, let's place a few more. Okay, that's good. You also have under reader support, so uh, control, control Z or Control Y to under redo everything. And you can also select objects and then change their settings. This can be done in this property view. You can also dock, dock windows. So, um, you can customize the layout and it will be restored when you start the tool the next time. So in the settings, you can, for example, change the color, the rotation, the scale, or the opacity. Or you can apply custom shaders and things like that. So that's it for the background layer. Let's jump to the object layer and place some things here. For example, some walls maybe. Let's press shift again. Have the automatic snapping. It's a wall here, so we have a better overview. This one looks nice. with a door like that the next time I should make it bigger so let's resize the map
Yeah, yeah. Now let's place some more walls. Again by pressing shift to be able to snap directly. Yeah, you could also try if 13, uh, 32 by 32 works better. Then it's easier to place them more accurate. accurate. That. And in this case, we should jump back to the background layer. You can also toggle the visibility here. So that makes it a bit, a bit easier to see what you're doing. Um, yeah, I should remove the filter. And place this again. that and back to the object layer and we make it also visible again. So let's place some final walls. Yeah, this one maybe. Oh no, that doesn't fit to the rest. And keep in mind to press shift. And the wall here. Okay, that's <laughs> hard to align them correctly. Not sure if there is a tie which fits there. Maybe you try that. But yeah, this tutorial is mostly about to show you how to use it. Um, I'm also not familiar with these graphics yet. They look great, but uh, yeah, I need to spend more time to investigate um, how to make them perfectly fit together. So let's place some cool stuff. Maybe we will yeah, we will clear that again and now we will go to the boss pack and let's see what's included here. Some big bosses. Okay, they are huge, so we should reduce the scale. And we place them in the foreground. Okay. That's one. Reduce the previous scale. These are really huge. Oh, this one looks cool too. Scale a bit. Um, yeah, these are the basics. Now you can save the level. It's saved as a JSON file, so it's a 
human readable text format. And you can also just create new levels in different tabs. So you have multiple tabs and can switch back and forth. And if you want to use that in a game, for example, if you use RPG Maker, you could also use the tool to export specific layers. So for example, if you just want to export the background layer, you can hide these two layers, but also the tile layer, and then click on File, Export Image with or without lighting, depending on if you need lighting. In our case, we don't need lighting, so. And then, then you can just export that as a PNG file and then import that in your engine. So you can stack the layers on top of each other and then render the dynamic units like the hero before that. Okay, yeah, that's it for the basic tutorial. I hope it helped some of you have fun with RPG, RPG tools and with the Humble Bundle. And see you next time.